I decided to pick up the traditional grip back in 2012, I think it was. It's like May, April or May 2012, I think I started messing with it. And uh, it took me about four years until I was actually really comfortable enough to the point where I could use that grip comfortably for a whole show. I was all over the place just researching, jumped on YouTube, man, I was looking at videos like crazy, and I was just studying like all my favorite drummers and zeroing in on that left hand and looking at the position and the fingering and, you know, the, their elbow, everything. I was looking at everything because I'm a very detail-oriented person. So during that process, while I was doing that, I learned a couple of things. And a lot of these videos are, are really detailed, but as detailed as they are, throughout my learning process, none of them were really answering the specific questions that I had as far as how to get the power and why am I always hitting the rim when I'm doing this and blah, 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 right? So I decided that once I got good at learning the traditional grip, I was going to do a full, super detailed tutorial on this grip and target specific things that you guys have to know to master this grip. So grab yourself a stick, meet me down in the studio, let's get to work. All right, so if you don't already have a stick handy, go grab one and let's just get right into this. Now, while I was learning how to use this grip, in the beginning, one of the main problems that I kept running into was I was constantly hitting the rim when I was trying to play backbeats. And it was super annoying, man, because I mean, it hurt. You know what I mean? You're trying to whack out these, these nice, um, rim shots and back beats and all that and you just keep hitting the rim it's just super annoying so when stuff like that happens it just causes me to dig deeper and really analyze what's going on here and try to find out what's happening so here's the thing man I want you to take note of these three key points with a traditional grip all right, now let's take a look at the hand for a second. There are, believe it or not, there are only three fingers involved with the traditional grip. The thumb, the index finger, and the ring finger. Now these three fingers play some super specific roles with this grip. All right, so let's um, look at each one for a second. Now, <clears throat> the first one I want to talk about, which I think is the most important, is the thumb. Now, there's a lot of videos out there that teach you to do certain exercises and, you know, stuff like that or whatever. Um, but they really don't get into too much detail as to why that is. Here's the reason. If you just kind of make your arm just kind of limp like this. Just take all of the, take all of the muscle out of it and just turn it into a wet sack. Um, on your thumb, this middle joint right here, okay? If you just kind of take your little pinchers here and feel around your thumb, just like that, you notice that there's a, there's a joint Obviously, there's a joint right in the middle, but right underneath it, it just kind of kind of dips in a little bit. So there's a bit of a ridge right under that joint. Now, if you make your arm just super limp and take all the weight off of it, you can lift up your entire arm if you grab your thumb right under here, right under that joint, and just lift your whole arm up, all right? When you're holding the stick, the butt end of that stick sits right up 
under that joint. And that, my friends, is where you get the power from, okay? So, right there, if you just, again, just kind of hold the stick like that, and you can stick it right up under that joint. That's where your power comes from. And um, this is crucial because when you're going to play backbeats and all that kind of stuff, that's gonna become really important. The index finger. Um, the index finger is what's gonna allow you to rebound the stick. Now, <clears throat> while you're playing, things like you know press rolls or flams or, um, or whatever else that involves bounce, any kind of controlled bounce, that's where the index finger comes in. So a lot of times when that's, um, when that's happening, what happens is the index finger just kind of curls in. And once, once you do that, because while you're bouncing the stick, it can be open like this, but when speed comes into play, what happens if you noticed um, what happened just now, the index finger just kind of curled in like that. And it's basically just lowers the ceiling. It's four o'clock. Thank you. Um, it just kind of lowers the ceiling on the stick. And that's what allows the speed to come into play. Um, because, you know, if you, if you can imagine when you're bouncing a tennis ball, if you bounce it from up here, you know, as you start to get lower, the, b the ball bounces faster because you're lowering the ceiling, right? Same thing. That's what the index finger does. So when you're going to play your ghost notes, rolls, press rolls, flams, any kind of lick that involves um, bouncing the stick, index finger. The ring finger, right here. The ring finger provides lift. So basically what happens while you're holding the stick is at the very end of your ring finger, that last digit, that's where the stick sits. Now all of the other videos mention this, so I'm not trying to sell you anything new here. This is just what it is. Um, so the stick just kind of rests right on that, that ring finger and that ring finger provides lift for the stick. So check this out. If I do this, you know, it looks like the pad is doing the work, but actually the ring finger is doing all of the work. Now there's obviously ways that you can use rebound to your advantage, but you know, utilizing that, uh, that ring finger for lift is important because when you go to play fast um, single strokes or you know anything that involves playing that way, that ring finger is what's going to provide that lift for you for the stick. So um, effectively now you can actually do a lot of stuff without the use of these two fingers at all. Um, Right now, my index and my second finger aren't touching the stick. And I can still get, where's my other? There it is. I can still, I can still do a fair bit of stuff with just these two, the, um, the ring finger and the thumb. So, those are the three. There's the thumb, there's the index finger, and that ring finger. The most important part that I wanna tell you guys, and this is crucial because, remember that problem that I was talking about before where I kept hitting the rim or whatever? This is what's gonna help eliminate that problem, all right? Now, when you're holding the stick, again, you notice that the butt end of the stick, it sits underneath that joint, yes, and that's what kind of keeps it firm, but it's sitting right here in this cradle. 
it is totally and absolutely crucial that you strengthen this pocket right here. The tighter the grip is, I shouldn't say tighter, because you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, stress your fingers out or, um, or you know, hold the, the, the stick too tight. You still want a nice firm grip, but it's still got to be loose enough that you can be nice and flexible. But that cradle, man, that right there, it's totally freaking crucial that you strengthen this cradle. This right here is what's going to allow you to do anything you want without the stick flying out of your hands, all right? It's also going to play a huge role when you're cracking back beats on the snare. The thumb is doing a lot of it, but the strength of that cradle right there is what's going to keep it nice and firm, and the stick is not going to slowly slip away and slip out of your hands while you're doing all this technical stuff. So that is a super critical point right there is this, this little cradle. When you strengthen this little pocket right here, this is what's going to allow you to fully open your hand up and play those backbeats without the stick flying out of your hands. It's still going to be sitting under your thumb, but when you're playing those backbeats, especially when you, when you get into the whole molar thing, um, your hand completely opens up, or it should, anyways. And when that happens, the only thing keeping that stick from flying out of your hands is that cradle. So the butt end of the stick sits right in there, and that is what's going to let you get all that nice animated, you know, action from. And extra power, too, because you'll be able to bring the stick down faster from a higher point. So, um, so yeah, man, critical part, cradle. Now, the other thing that you'll notice about the traditional grip is that there's actually a few different variations of uh, this particular grip. So there's not just one right way to do it. If you watch different drummers, you'll notice that um, there's some slight differences in how they do it. All the principles are exactly the same, but everybody's different, right? Everybody's got a different personality, and um, you're going to want to hold the stick however you want to do it. Now, I've tried all of them, and, uh, and what I've discovered is that eventually your body is just going to naturally settle in to whatever grip it wants to do. All right, so I'm going to give you three exercises that's going to help you develop a killer traditional grip. And each one of these exercises is going to target each one of these fingers just to sort of help you work out the, uh, the function of each of these fingers. As you may have heard me say before, repetition fixes everything. The only way to get used to doing something is to do it a million times in a row. All right? So let's first of all tackle the ring finger and the thumb. This exercise is, is sort of um, targeted to strengthen this cradle and get these two fingers happening all at the same time, all right? So all you're gonna do is put the stick in your hand just like that, and you just it's only gonna touch these two fingers. So sit that stick right up underneath that joint, like I mentioned before. Let it sit on, um, on the end of that ring finger, just like that. And all you're gonna do is that. Believe it or not, man, that's all you're gonna do. Sitting there, whatever, watching The Simpsons, watching Seinfeld reruns, watching whatever. Um, that's all you gotta do, man. If you're using a practice pad, you know, just want to put a t-shirt over it so you don't bug the crap out of your wife while you're doing this. Uh, but that's, that's all you're doing, man. And you're really, again, just getting used to the function of these two fingers. The next thing you can do is just practice bouncing it. 
You might experience a little bit of sliding in and out of the stick. Don't worry about that, okay? These muscles are trying to learn what to do. So just give them time. Muscle memory is the key to everything, right? And that's basically all you're trying to do here. So that's it, man. You can just bounce it. Singles. Doubles. Just like that. Don't let these two fingers touch it at all. Unless you want to just kind of bring it back into position, that's cool. But while you're doing the, the, the bouncing, just let these two fingers do the work. And that's going to help build that cradle and strengthen this pocket, which is crucial for strong back beats and all that other stuff. The next exercise I'm going to show you is for the index finger. For the index finger, you, you basically just want to start practicing rebound. You want to get this finger used to helping the stick bounce. And the best way to do that is just a simple double stroke. Now, if you're just getting into this, grip is going to feel a little bit weird. But um, if you have a little bit of experience already with this grip and you just want to start to strengthen it, um, the purpose of this, again, is to activate this index finger and just get it used to bouncing the stick. And it's just a basic bounce, you know, just play some simple doubles. And all you're going to do is really just, just curl that finger over just a little bit. That's all you really need to do. Just curl it over just a bit over top of the stick and you know, real simple man, just play doubles. One thing that you can do is on the index finger, that second digit, think of this as a button. And while you're holding the stick, you just want to keep your thumb on the button. Think of it that way. And that'll sort of help the, um, the stick sort of settle into where it needs to be. When you press that button, that digit there, it's also going to help um, sit that butt into the stick nice and firmly into that, that cradle. So that's all you're going to do, man. Just sit there, play doubles. Another exercise that I'm going to recommend that you do this one is for, you know, when you start to get a little bit better at this grip. This is going to be really great, actually, for activating everything over here. The lift finger, the rebound finger, and, um, and your thumb. And it's also going to help you practice opening your hand up. That's the, the point of this exercise. And what you're going to do here is you're going to, you're going to go back and forth between single stroke, you know, using accents, which I'll show you in a second, and, um, and a single paradiddle. So it's an exercise that involves playing singles and doubles, so you're going to get to use everything going on here. So basically it looks like this. One, two, one, two, three, so like that. Uh, 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 uh. One, two, one, two. Now you'll notice when I'm playing my singles, da, da, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that, I'm opening my hand up. That is a good practice um, because you know while you're playing, while you're in action, all of this stuff is going to be happening at the same time. You're going to be switching back and forth between opening your hand up and going straight into rebound and all that kind of stuff. This is a great exercise to do this on a repetitive basis, and it just helps you to get used to that whole thing. So, um, triplets and then single paradiddle.
My elbows are nice and tucked in as I'm doing this, as you might notice. Just stay nice and relaxed and just hit it. Just like that. Now, this last exercise that I'm gonna show you is gonna be really great for getting that index finger in shape. And you only need one stick for this. And this is one that I did in front of the TV really, really often for long periods of time. Actually to the point where I had to stop because, because of overuse, I started getting spasms in my thumb. That was my own fault. So I don't recommend going nuts with this. Just do it, you know, as often as you can, but just don't go, don't, don't go crazy with it. I used to do this, you know, I would sit there in front of the TV and do this for like two hours, which is ridiculous. Like you don't have to, you don't have to get that crazy with it. It worked, but you don't have to get that crazy with it. Um, so basically what it is, is you're gonna be bouncing triplets with the one hand. You may have seen some guys do this before, but it's just like that. And what I'm doing there is there's, there's obviously three strokes happening, one and then two rebounds. So I'm bringing the stick down with the thumb, with this part of the thumb, and then once it's down there, I'm bouncing it with the index finger. So it's like that. And like I said, I did this a lot. And this really helps when you're doing anything involving, you know, playing doubles, ghost notes on the snare, you know, all that, kind of, that cool groove stuff. This exercise is gonna affect all of that stuff. And it's just gonna end up sounding better when you do it. So, Again, that's all I'm doing. Bringing the stick down, you know, curling that index finger over and helping the stick bounce. That's it. So yeah, man, I am 100% sure that those three exercises alone are gonna help you develop a smoking traditional grip. Don't rush it, it's probably gonna take a while. Like I said, it took me about four years on and off until I was really comfortable to the point now where I can, I can play an entire show using that grip and not worry about it. So don't rush it, man. Don't rush this process because the thing that I really like about the traditional grip is that you have to earn it. It's not a natural grip, right? When you're a kid, you pick up sticks for the first time, you're not gonna pick them up like this. You have to learn this, all right? So, you know, you really gotta work to get this thing happening. And it's totally worth it, I think. If you stuck it out for this long, I can assure you, your time was not wasted. You're gonna become really good at this as long as you stick with these exercises. Don't injure yourself, you know what I mean? Don't grip the stick too hard. Take your time with it and just let it develop. And don't forget to take breaks. That's another crucial thing. I said it took me four years on and off. That's because I did it for a little bit and then I just got away from it. And a um, couple of months at a time, I didn't even touch it. And then miraculously, I go back to it and I'm better at it for whatever reason. So don't forget to take breaks when you do this, man. Um, that's about it. I'm gonna close this out. This was a long lesson. And uh, I think I need a break. So <laughs> thanks for sticking this out. Don't forget to tell people where you learned this. Like, subscribe. See you in the next video.